Hey everyone, and welcome to another Solid Shell security video that has to do with computer and server making. Uh, tonight we are going to be going over a very, very nice commonly used server build that we use for virtual private servers along with web hosting and can also just be used for any other possible need that you might have, whether it be for like maybe storage or uh, virtual machines or anything like that. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab uh, Intel Xeon E3-1270 V2. Now this is a very, very nice, awesome chip. It operates at 3.5 and it has the capability of going to 3.9. Now, for the best performance that you want for, the, for your money, this really is a very, very powerful, very, very nice CPU at a very low discounted price and as well as power usage it only operates at 69 watts now when it comes to using any, any lower end I won't want to say low low end but the E3 is really a nice very powerful performing server processor but it's also very inexpensive compared to like an E5 or an E7 which are really not as fast and processor speed, but they do have a lot more cars, which is, it, should, it evens out depending on how you want to do it. But for the e, E3, you can get a, a very, very fast performing ch chip, which allows you to operate things very, very quickly, very, very fast, which really works really, really nice in a lot of web hosting cases where you just want to load the pages quick, fast, execute uh, a query, something like that, very, very quickly. It gets it done quick and it moves on to the next thing. So we we'd like to use E3. So we're just going to go ahead and grab the E3, use it, and we're going to toss it in a super micro. Now this is for a micro ATX server. Um, this is a very, very, very nice motherboard that we prefer to use. Uh, I've never had issues with it, never had any problems. We personally prefer to use super micro when it comes to anything on production because they make a very, very high end, high quality. Now, we also want to go ahead and grab another heat sink. Uh, we personally prefer this heat sink. It's really nice, especially for the 1155 and 1156. And since we are using an 1155, we're going to go ahead and grab this one because it's a really nice airflow and really does a great job at spreading out the heat. We're also going to go ahead and grab um, Kingston. These are 8 gigabyte sticks. And we're going to max this, the uh, system out at 32 gigs of RAM. And finally, we are going to grab a couple of WD Blacks and set up a RAID 10. Now, the one thing we did not include in this build is a dedicated RAID adapter card. Now, if you really want to spend an additional maybe two, three hundred something dollars, and you're running um, intensive I/O processes or something of that nature, like maybe a VPS server, virtual machines, things like that go ahead and grab the adapter, spend an extra two or three hundred some dollars on something quality, you'll thank me later. But in the case of what our client wants to do, which is simple web hosting, um, and they kind of want to keep it cheap, around a thousand dollars, but because they wanted to get some extra performance, we went ahead and went with a higher chip. Um, you could have gone with an E3 uh, 1230, and I've saved about a hundred something dollars but because of that they we went a little high here but if you have the extra money go ahead and buy a dedicated rate adapter with a battery backup supply so you can do actual caching not to worry about anything but in this case we went ahead and just you're just going to grab uh, some WD blacks one terabytes and the rate 10 will give us about two terabytes which is pretty accurate and okay for um, web hosting if you want, you can always grab like maybe two, three, four terabyte drives and really get a lot of extra disk space. But uh, I'm personally not a fan of actually overloading the max out of server that much. And we advised the client that really wasn't the best idea. But so we're just going to try and grab one terabyte drives. For the case, we're just going to go ahead and grab the Supermicro CSE 813 MTQ 350 CV Black 1U. This is a really nice case. It allows us to stick all the hard drives in the front and everything will fit in very, very nice. So we did this entire build. 
under fifteen hundred dollars now it is actually possible to do this exact same build and do some shopping around and get it for about a thousand dollars but that's coming in with a e3 twelve thirty chip which isn't really a bad thing uh... depending on the processor power you may or not need but all in all this is really really nice for a thirty two gigabyte machine and we don't expect our client to have any issues or any problems with this machine uh, this is a really nice setup and we personally love this setup we use this setup ourselves on our own web hosting and we also sell out of these very very quickly in our dedicated server lineup but if you're a business and you're looking to actually create a, a fast system that's very scalable because you can always add additional hard drive space or you can also update the CPU and go with like a 1295 if you wanted to and up the uh, processor speed however you are limited to the amount of memory so if you're looking for a high-end memory system like say 64 gigabytes or 128 or 256 gig something like that you're going to want to shop around and probably consider getting like an E5 or something or maybe go with like a Xeon L 5400, 5420 or something like that which will actually give you the ability to do dual processors and go way high up in memory but if you don't need a lot of RAM and you're looking for mostly a, a fast processing box to push your request really quickly very fast consider this like me for a database server uh, if you want to make this into a database server I would grab a couple of SSDs dedicated um, RAID adapter maybe grab um, an E3 1295 or a 1290 and you would be pushing queries extremely fast and really have a nice fast SQL box so depending on what you want to do this is a really nice setup and I don't see you having any problems running this setup we don't but once again if you're looking for something with like dual processors or um, a lot more RAM like if you really want a lot of RAM you're going to probably want to consider a different setup but if you don't mind and you want like a fast processing machine this is definitely the ideal setup for you and once again guys thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed this and found this very informative to help you with building a server and I would like to encourage you guys to like us, subscribe to us, follow us, stalk us um, anything else you guys want to think we've got free catnip, we've got coffee you know come hang out the office is with us chill you know we'll be more than happy to show you guys some stuff and but yeah we've got a lot of cool stuff coming so talk to you guys later